The first course is prepared by Rick Bayless, whose Chicago restaurants offer bona fide Mexican cuisine. You can't get more authentic than the chef's corn tamales. From Jackson, Mississippi, Chef Nick Apostle cooks an entree that in the South is a seasonal delicacy, soft-shell crawfish served with a tarragon chive butter sauce. Finally, from the Ritz-Carlton at Amelia Island, Florida, pastry chef Kevin Box offers dessert. It's a goat cheese tart featuring a cornmeal sweet dough with citrus confit. Rick Bayless, like a number of young American chefs, achieved national recognition with triangulation by opening multiple restaurants and publishing a cookbook. In 1995, he won the prestigious Chef of the Year Award from the Beard Society. From his Frontera Grill, here are corn tamales. Making uh, fresh corn tamales is always a very special thing in Mexico and all through the Southwest because when that first harvest of the fresh corn comes out, when the kernels are still really moist and they haven't begun to dry, that's when everyone wants to make the fresh corn tamales. Now in Mexico, that would be done with field corn, but here in the United States we have the sweet corn to work with, which isn't nearly as starchy. But you would treat them both the same way when you were starting out the preparations here, and that would be to cut the base right basically where the cob starts and start peeling off some of these outer husks because we could use these actually to wrap the tamales a little later on in this in this process of making fresh corn tamales and once these have been taken off you can see that if they're if they're not coming off really easily maybe we haven't made our cut quite at the right spot so we can tear off the last bit here and we're going to try to get all of the corn silk with it, as much of it as possible, and just leave that lying right there. Clean off as much silk. We don't want that to get into the finished tamales. And then cut, standing it up like this, cut the kernels right off the cob. And this is going to form the base of our mixture that we make these out of. It's not everything that goes in. And in fact, since we're making these with sweet corn, I follow a tradition that I discovered in southern Mexico a great number of years ago about making the sweet corn tamales, that if your corn doesn't have quite enough starch in it, and the sweet corn never will, that we would make this dish with half sweet corn. I've got the kernels cut from two cobs here. We would make it with half sweet corn that's been ground, and I'll show you. That doesn't take very long in the food processor. Just get a coarse puree going out of that sweet corn. And then the other half of the mixture is going to be masa. Now this is masa that they that made from the field corn, but once it's been dried and then cooked with slaked lime, and then ground through stone grinders. This is the same mixture, the same dough that's used for making corn tortillas. Except in this case, it's just a little bit coarser than, coarser ground than what would be used for making the tortillas. It's a special kind of masa, they call this mixture, masa for tamales. So we're gonna mix that in with the fresh corn. But the rest of the ingredients are butter and a really rich flavored pork lard that we buy from a local Mexican grocer. Now, if you don't want to use that, it's not absolutely necessary for the sweet corn tamales as it is for the other savory tamales. You could use Crisco or some sort of vegetable shortening or just an additional amount of butter in the same proportion. And then I have three ingredients mixed together. It's a small amount of baking powder, salt, and sugar, and that will go in with the remainder of those ingredients. And we're gonna turn this on, and it needs to puree or mix, or I'm pulsing it just to get it started, get an even mixture going here, but it needs to now go for about a minute. The mixture will be cooked in a banana leaf which the chef warms over an open flame. 
And now it's time to prepare the leaves that we're going to wrap these in before we put them into the steamer. Now I said you could use the fresh corn husks for this. These would need to be lightly blanched if you find that they're curling up on you like these are. But I thought it'd be fun to show the use of the banana leaves because those are used extensively in southern Mexico and all along that east coast Veracruz and down into Tabasco and Chiapas. And I'm put, putting these over a flame. You could also steam them if working over the open flame is not your thing. But I'm just lightly toasting it. And you'll notice a real change in the color of the leaf as all of the oils come to the surface. And it makes the leaf much, much, much more pliable. Now these leaves are usually purchased in frozen state in the United States, most of them coming from the Philippines. But you can also find them occasionally fresh. Those have to be cooked for sure. Um, steaming them, maybe 20 minutes will be enough time to soften them up the same way. Now, these can be filled or done solo, as we're doing today, without a filling. Meat filling is typical shredded pork cooked with a little of the smoky chipotle chilies. Put a little bit of it in the center of your, of your a banana leaf, fold it over one side, fold it over the other, and then top and bottom. Now, they could go into your steamer just like that, or to ensure that they're not going to come apart, they can be flipped around and tied up with a string like a package. The tamales are steamed in a single layer. Plate, a small plate, and you could also do this for a grand buffet style too. It makes a beautiful presentation with these exotic banana leaves and so forth. You can see how they have come away from, they're not sticking at all to the leaf. That's the first indication that they're done. They take about an hour in the steamer, and you can see I'm just kind of rolling and folding those leaves up around the base and serve them right in that packet. People are always asking if that's something that's to be eaten or not, and it is not. It's just their wrapper that they come steamed in. And there are several different toppings you could put. Your favorite salsa could go on there, as I'm doing here, a little dollop of this homemade sour cream. And I always like to do something that's fresh on them as well. Some sprigs of cilantro or a little bit of chopped raw onion, white onion, tangy, strong white onion is always a nice accompaniment too. And they have a slightly sweet taste, and they have a real elemental earthiness about them that I think goes very nicely balanced with that creaminess, that slightly soured cream, and the fresh cilantro. Chef Nick Apostle is owner or part owner in four Mississippi restaurants, including his namesake operation in Jackson. In 1997, he was invited to join chefs from all seven American rice producing states in the Washington Rice Celebration at the nation's capital. His entree is soft shell crawfish with a butter sauce. Soft shell crawfish are a true, true delicacy. These crawfish come from Bogalusa, Louisiana. They are soft shelled. These crawfish are frozen and have been thawed out. A crawfish will molt and then the shell will harden within 24 hours after he's molted. So these have to be har harvested and then th these are put in gallon plastic baggies and frozen in water. All the features, these soft shells come completely intact with all their, their features. In order to prepare the soft shell crawfish for this dish, you merely lay your crawfish down. You want to protect the features. The claws are probably one of the most important part of that. You put your head, your hand rather, to each side of the head of the crawfish and you can feel 
two little knots. These are calcium deposits. What you want to do is bring your knife right behind the eye of the crawfish and just push down forward to go ahead and, and break the face of the crawfish off and then merely squeeze these calcium deposits. Take your knife and just push them right out. Everything else about this crawfish is edible. The fat from the crawfish is still in the head, which is considered a true delicacy. The crawfish will be coated with a seasoned flour and egg wash. It contains salt, black, white, and cayenne pepper, onion powder, paprika, garlic powder, thyme, and oregano. Place it into the seasoned flour. Make sure you coat the crawfish thoroughly with the flour, because that's your base for your breading. Shake off the excess. Be gentle so you don't lose any of your appendages. Okay. Now we're going to go back in the seasoned flour. Make sure you separate all the little appendages so when you drop it in the grease, the hot grease, it's not going to just come out as a glob. Lay them in the grease. All they need is just about a minute or two. The crawfish are served with a savory beurre blanc flavored with white wine, fish stock, balsamic vinegar, chives, and tarragon. Take some sauce, pour it onto a warm plate. Just spread your butter sauce all the way across the bottom. Take your soft shell crawfish. present them as such, but this is it. It's a mouthful. At the time of taping, the pastry chef at the snazzy Ritz-Carlton at Amelia Island was Kevin Box. He has since moved to the Ritz-Carlton on St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. His dessert is a cornmeal sweet dough tart filled with goat cheese and served with a lavender citrus confit. First we're doing a cornmeal sweet dough. Um, we add the uh, dry ingredients together in a large bowl with uh, cornmeal. Uh, all-purpose flour, um, six tablespoons of sugar, and we have uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt and one and a half, uh, three teaspoons of baking powder, which I added together. I'm going to mix the dry greens together and combine them. There are one and a half cups each cornmeal and all-purpose flour. And we have uh, four and a half ounces of uh, cold, cold butter cubed up. I'm going to add that. And uh, I like to cut it in with my uh, fingers so I can feel it. Um, and you can use a pastry cutter or a fork if you like. But you want to go into a, a, almost like a flat piece, uh, flat. Um, piece 
pieces, cut it in, and uh, you want to break it up into little pieces. Once you got the uh, butter distributed evenly, you make a well and add uh, one cup of cream. When the dough just begins to come together, it's moved to a work surface. It's going to seem like a fairly dry dough, but don't worry about that. When combining the dough, guard against overworking it. Chill for an hour before proceeding. I'm going to make the dough flat as possible before you even pick up your pin. A little flour. And for this recipe, I'm using a, a small tartlet shell. You could use the 10 inch shell if you would like. Cut it out with a pastry cutter. Freeze the shells, then pre bake at 350 degrees until the edges are golden brown. And I like cutting this dough. This dough is, uh, it, it shrinks a little bit, it won't shrink that much. I like uh, putting it, cutting the dough larger than my tart shell so I could put this in and form it almost like a flower or a napkin into a container. Meanwhile, the filling is started with 20 ounces of soft goat cheese. Okay, and now for the filling, uh, I'm using a, a fresh goat cheese curd. Um, it comes in a tub. It's a little bit softer than the log goat cheese that you buy at a store. And you want to do this like a, like a cheesecake, like a cream cheese. You're going to cream the, the, the goat cheese with the butter, four tablespoons of uh, softened butter with the, with the sugar. Using the paddle attachment, the cheese, butter, and sugar are combined. Then four whole eggs and a tablespoon of flour are added. Then you add your eggs one at a time. After the eggs are combined, you stop your mixture, scrape down the sides of the bowl. And there you have it. Smooth, no lumps. You take your pre-baked shell uh, and spoon the filling into the shell. And bake just until set. The chef prepares a citrus coffee. We start with the uh, zest of uh, Four, four oranges and six, six lemons. And we segment the uh, fruit off as well. So with one half cups of water, one cup of sugar, your zest. I'm using uh, fresh lavender and uh, 
The part I'm chopping is the lavender leaves. Take that. Two, te two teaspoons of uh, fresh lavender. The aromatic herb lavender is a member of the mint family and is often used in making tea. And once it reduced to almost like a jam-like consistency, you, you want to add your, um, your segments of fruit. And what you come up with is a, uh, a candied uh, zest. With the, uh, with the herbs and the uh, segmented fruit. You cook it, after you add these segments, you cook it for three minutes. You don't want to break up the uh, segments that much. When the tart, the tart is baked, just to tilt firm to the touch. You cool it down and it pops right out of the shell. An interesting marinade for sliced strawberries includes sugar, ground pepper, chopped lavender, and vodka. The vodka and the pepper reacts um, to bring out the flavor of the berries and just to enhance the flavor. Let's stand for 30 minutes. I like to garnish the plate with powdered sugar. Fresh blackberries. Finally, aged Portuguese goat cheese. 